Welcome to the Mango Monkey Show. My name is Mango Monkey. Today we will talk about some of the benefits and disadvantages of buying a home with only 5% deposit. At the end, I will tell you that buying a home with a low deposit actually makes sense, even if you pay a higher interest rate or a higher lender's mortgage insurance. It's all got to do with the fact that the property prices in Sydney keeps going up. A lot of my customers told me that they can never catch up to the property prices in Sydney. They try to save for a deposit. They save $400 a week consistently every single week for a few years. By the time they have 20% deposit, it's already more than 10 years since they started. And by that time, the property price has already doubled. They already have their kids, their kids go to private school, yada, yada, yada. Or sometimes they want to buy a car, they want to go to Europe, they want to do this, they want to do that, and their money gets used up. Some other times what happens is their family sees that they have money. So because there's no one else in the family circle that has money, my customer get asked for money and their savings get used up again. After all these years of hard work, their money suddenly evaporates. They can never ever buy a home. So in my opinion, it can be a good idea to buy a home with as little as 5% deposit. As soon as you have that 5%, you use it, you put it to work to buy your home. Do not let anyone else steal it. Not your family, not your uncle, not your auntie. Keep it to yourself. And do not let yourself spend it on a holiday. It's a big temptation, I know, especially if the money is quite big. When you see $30,000, $40,000 or $100,000 with five zeros in it, it's a very big temptation for you to spend it. Now I have to make one disclaimer for you. So I am not a financial advisor. I don't have any qualification. So you take my words with a grain of salt. I'm just a mango monkey here. I think I'm smart like a monkey, but I'm not a qualified financial planner. So in this video, I'll be sharing some of my experiences with buying properties and how I think in my opinion, it could potentially work for some other people, not necessarily yourself, but maybe a few other people. So you might be wondering, what is the cost of a 5% deposit home loan? Well, let me answer that for you. Okay, so it varies from bank to bank, but one of the banks I work with works as follows. They offer a product with a higher interest rate for the first year. Currently, it's a variable interest rate of 4.62%. And, and you heard that right, it's 4.62%, which is higher than a typical home loan offered as of today. I know that some banks offer 2.29%, 2.24% interest rates right now if you have a bit more deposit. This, this loan here is quite a bit higher, that is true. But generally, the banks that offer a 2%-ish interest rate needs you to contribute at least 8% deposit. So stay with me for a moment. How much does the Sydney property goes up every year? Well, I cannot really answer that because every year is different. But recently I saw this article that was published in Domain, the real estate listing platform in February 2020. If you go to Domain, you'll find that they were predicting a price increase for apartments in Sydney of around 8% in 2020 and between 3% and 5% in 2021. Now, of course, this was before the COVID-19 pandemic. Now it's probably not accurate anymore and prices might even drop in the next one or two years. But I think it's reasonable to say that over the long term, property prices tend to increase between 3% and 5% each year. So what does this mean for you? Well, you pay an interest rate of 4.62%, that is around 2.33% higher than if you were to go with a bank who can offer you a rate of 2.29%. That is if you have a deposit of at least 8%. Now, if the property price goes up 3 to 5% every year, you're still ahead each year, even though you're paying a higher interest rate. Now, what is also good about this bank here is that if you pay on time, in the second year, they can move you into a cheaper product who will be comparable with the other banks who need you to purchase with 8% deposit. So in other words, it's only more expensive in the first year. 
that's very good. Now today, there is the coronavirus pandemic. Prices may go down from here, and it probably will not go up much. So this strategy may not be the right one for you. You have to talk to your financial planner to see if it might be the best one for your individual circumstances. But this is the question you should be asking yourself. So let's say now you have a 5% deposit. So that's $30,000 if your home is going to be 600000 Do you think, seriously, if you look at what you have been doing in the last few years, can you hold on to this money until you have 8% deposit? which will probably take you another couple of years because you're saving $100 per week per person and there are two of you. Now, in two years time from now, you will have $50,000. With this $50,000, do you think you will be tempted to buy a nice BMW? Do you think you'll be tempted to go on holiday? Do you think you will have kids? And do you think you will want to send your kids to a private school? Do you think you can hold on to this money for that long? For some people, I think it's better to spend the money on a property as soon as you get the opportunity. Now, so we've gone over the interest rate. That's only one of the things that we need to consider. What is the other costs that may be applicable when you buy a home with only 5% deposit, you may ask? Well, there's something called lender's mortgage insurance, also known as LMI. I cannot give you an exact quote of how much the LMI is, but I can give you a ballpark figure. If you buy a home with 5% deposit, the LMI is more or less 3% of the property purchase price. So if the home is $600,000, the LMI insurance premium is roughly around $18,000. Okay, so if you follow my plan, what you do is you divide the LMI insurance premium by two years. So 3% ballpark figure of LMI insurance premium divided by two years, so you pay essentially 1.5% per year. Why did I say two years? Because according to the plan I have outlined to you, if you save $100 per week and there are two of you, it will take you two years to increase your deposit from 5% to 8%. Now, what happens if you have 8% deposit? How much is the LMI insurance premium at that time? Well, it will go down a little bit. It will drop from around 3% to around 2% of the property value. So that is around 1% per year if you divide that by a couple of years. So if we add up the higher interest rate and the higher LMI insurance premium, your property price needs to go up by more than 3% per year so that it's better for you to buy your property now instead of waiting another couple of years, which is when you have 8% deposit. Now, is this a good move? Well, it depends. Probably not right now in the coronavirus pandemic, but in other scenarios, it's probably okay. If the property market is going up, it's definitely okay because you actually get more in terms of increase in property value compared to the cost of the LMI insurance premium and the higher interest rate. Now, potentially, even right now, even if the prices are going down, it could still be a good move if you think you cannot hold on to your piggy bank for a very long time. So, for example, if you think that if you have $50,000 in your, in your account, you will be tempted to spend it on a nice car or go on a holiday, then I think it's a good idea to spend it before it goes to $50,000. I think it's easier to get to $30,000 and spend it compared to keeping $30,000 for another couple of years until you have $50,000. Now, what if I want to put in 20% deposit? I don't want to pay any LMI insurance. That's money down the drain. Well, this really depends on how much you save per week. If you follow my plan to only save only $100 per week, then it will probably take you 12 years to get a 20% deposit for a property of $600,000. And this assumes there are two of you, you and your partner. The LMI is around 3% of the purchase price, so you divide 3% by 12 years. Actually, it's nine years because it's nine extra years. So that's only 0.33% each year. Now that's minuscule compared to the benefits and the certainty that you can obtain by buying the property right now instead of nine years later. If your property price goes up by more than 0.33% per year, then you're already making more than the insurance premium. Now are there some other ways, maybe some loopholes to avoid this LMI insurance premium? Well, good news, they are. 
So there are a few banks who offer LMI waiver if you have 15% deposit. Normally the interest rate is a little bit higher, but you don't pay any LMI insurance. Now, if you work in certain occupations, for example, if you are a doctor, accountant or a lawyer, you can potentially get no LMI, even if you only have 5% or 10% deposit. At the moment, there's also a special government scheme. The spot is limited, but potentially if you get this spot, even if you don't work as a lawyer or something special, you can actually get the LMI to be waived for you as well. And you get the same interest rate as if you contribute 20% deposit. Okay, so the big question, do I buy now when I have 5% deposit, a bit later when I have 8% or 10%, 12%, 15% or 20%? When, when is the best time to buy? Because generally you'll find that the more deposit you put in, the, the cheaper the, the cost, the cheaper the interest rate, the cheaper the LMI insurance premium. Even after you have 20% deposit, you can probably get slightly cheaper interest rate if you put in 30% or 40%. Now, what I have learned through my life experiences is that sometimes I cannot get the best thing that I want. I cannot be too picky. It's better to get something than nothing. The earlier I buy a property, the earlier I get forced to save on a monthly basis because I need to pay my mortgage. It's a very different feeling compared to saving. When you have a mortgage, it's compulsory. You have to pay. When you're saving money, it's not compulsory. You, you could actually spend the money on a nice holiday. It, it essentially feels like your rental expense. You have to pay your rental expense on time so that you don't get affected. But the difference is that if you have a mortgage, you pay it down, you actually build wealth as well. Because on average, property value tends to go up. So for some of you, it might be better for you to get into the property market as soon as possible. You can buy a one bedroom apartment or two bedroom apartment, not necessarily in the center of the city. Could be one hour drive from the place that you work. So a lot of my customers actually think like this and they complain to me, well, I cannot buy a two bedroom apartment. I want, I want a house. I want a house with land. I want a house with three bedrooms, four bedrooms. I will have a big family later on. You know what? This is what I think. I think you could buy a property that's going to last you for the next five years. It doesn't have to last you for 10 years. Just five years is okay, I think. Because you know what? A lot of properties get sold within five years. People have great depth properties and in five years time it's quite likely although not certain it's quite likely that your property value has gone up well you have to project yourself and your family for the next five years if you are a young couple with no kids i think you need to buy at least a two-bedroom apartment do not buy a one bedroom but you probably do not need three bedrooms you will probably have two babies in the next five years right now they are still going to be under five years old. They can sleep in the same bedroom. After five years, your salary is likely to be higher than today. Your property value should have gone up substantially, hopefully. And you can use the equity you have built up in your property to purchase the next one with, with potentially no deposit. I mean, when I said no deposit, no cash deposit, you still put some kind of deposit through your equity. Well, what if you don't get approved for your next loan in five years or what if the property price has gone down so you don't have any equity to use well now there's emergency measure there's always a backup plan remember you have a two-bedroom apartment you have a living room one of your kids can actually sleep in the living room this is a true story one of my friends sleeps in the living room when she was a student she found it on gumtree it is very cheap around 150 dollars per week and it's comfortable, it's near the university. The living room has a partition, so imagine if you have a bedroom, basically, instead of a door, it's a partition. Outside the partition, there's the dining table and there's a kitchen. So, so let's recap. The idea is to buy a home which you will be happy with for the next five years. And if push comes to shove, something that you can keep forever. Now, I am a mortgage broker and I get some clients from Facebook. Now, a lot of these clients don't even have $10,000. They normally have around $5,000. Sometimes they get to $10,000 after they save 
but as soon as they get that $10,000, often it goes down again. So there was this customer that never really became a customer. So he was almost ready to buy a home. We talked a few different times. His income was great. I told him to save for a few more months to, to get to a bit more deposit. It looks very promising. So a few months later, I called him, how are you going? Well, you know what? He told me he got himself a nice car with a car loan. Imagine what's the monthly repayment on that loan? Well, it's at least $700 a month. It could easily be more than $1,000 a month, depending on the interest rate and the duration of the loan. Now, $700 a month is actually massive when it comes to a home loan. It reduces your borrowing power by around $100,000. It's, it's huge. Home loan is a 30-year loan, but when you have a car loan, it's normally between 5 and 7 years. However, the bank system is not that sophisticated, so what they assume is that your car loan will run for the next 30 years. At the same time, your salary will not go up over the next 30 years. Now, when the bank does their assessment, they need to see that you can afford the home loan both today and also five or seven years down the track when the car loan has already been paid off. What makes it a little bit worse is that the bank assumes the interest rate on your home loan may actually go up over the next 30 years. Most banks have a buffer of around 2.5%. So if let's say your interest rate today is 2%, they assume that it could potentially be 5.5% over the next 30 years. And you need to be able to show that your income is enough today to pay for the loan at a 5.5% interest rate without any salary increase. Does it sound crazy to you? I think it does, but that's how it works. So for me, it has always been easy to save. I used to be a bookworm at university. I didn't go out, didn't do anything. I stayed at home with my parents. I didn't pay rent, I had a weekend job. All the money from the weekend job always goes into my bank account and it almost never comes out again. My main spending back then was an Opel card. It used to be called Travel 10. And what I used to do, and sometimes I still do it now, is to count the sections. For example, if, if I go by train from Chas Food to the city, if I go to Vineyard, it's actually around 50 cents cheaper than if I go to Town Hall. So, so what I did was I went to Vineyard and I walked to Town Hall. Another thing I used to do is that if I finish my lecture 15 minutes earlier before the off-peak period starts, I used to actually hang around for 15 minutes and play with my phone until it's the off-peak period. You can easily get around half price that way. But I know this kind of lifestyle is not sustainable for many people and it's not desirable. I'm not trying to make you live your life like that. And in the big picture of things, it is probably not necessary, but it does help you get into property a few months faster. Once you have a property, you have a contractual mortgage repayment. What this means is it's easier for you to save. The bank will actually call you if you're late in your mortgage repayment. They charge you fees. And then if you see this fee charged on your account, you feel bad, you feel angry, you want to avoid it the next time around. A typical home loan, as I said, runs for 30 years. So after 30 years, you will own the home completely. I'll do another video a little bit later on on how you can actually create wealth out of property. There's something called the power of compounding. So property grows as a percentage of the current value. As the current value gets bigger, the growth also gets bigger in dollar terms. The percentage growth may be the same, but the dollar value growth gets bigger and bigger. I made a short ebook on how this works, and if you are interested, you can message me for a copy. The short way of saying it is that property value grows like a snowball. You roll the snowball down the, the hill, the more the ball keeps rolling, the bigger it gets. You need to keep rolling the snowball as long as possible. In other words, you need to start buying property early. Now, before I end this video, just another disclaimer. The figures I have mentioned here are essentially ballpark figures. They are not accurate and also they change with time. So please check with your bank, your mortgage broker, your financial advisor, 